Hi everyone, I'm JP Leberton, project lead of Space Base DF9 here at Double Fine, and welcome to our video uh, talking about what's new in Space Base Alpha 4, the terrible secrets of space. I'm joining you as our studio sits on the brink of amnesia. Uh, for those who don't know, Amnesia Fortnite is our once a year-ish uh, studio game jam where we pitch different prototypes uh, and you, the our fans and viewers and players and such uh, vote on the prototypes that we make and then we divide into teams and make them for two weeks and uh, the folks here uh, helping me make this video right now, Two Player Productions, uh, documents the whole thing and then at the end we give you the prototypes and there's a video documentary about the whole process. Uh, it's a lot of fun and very exciting. Uh, it's actually this process in 2012, Amnesia Fortnite 2012, uh, Space Base DF9 was one of the prototypes uh, and so the game that you're playing now uh, is actually came out of that process. So it's exciting. Uh, it will mean a brief uh, two-week pause in Space Base's development, but as soon as we're done with that, we'll be right back uh, fixing and improving and adding new things to Space Base uh, on the road to... We might do a minor update Alpha 4B, uh, add a few more features or fixes or whatever, um, or we might just roll straight into, into Alpha 5. Um, but either way, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and for those uh, who are just now hearing about Amnesia Fortnite, you can go to uh, humblebundle.com slash doublefine, uh, where you can see the progress of, you know, you can see us streaming our game development, our game jam stuff over the next two weeks, and uh, put down money for the prototypes, the doc you know, the, the, the previous Amnesia Fortnite's prototypes, all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, that said, let's get into what um, what's new in Alpha 4. Um, a cool big visual uh, difference that you might notice here uh, is that the backdrop uh, that you're building your base in front of the region of space that you're floating out in, uh, building this thing from scratch. Uh, there's now uh, it's a uh, this is this is all work that our that our lead artist Jeremy Mitchell uh, has been doing. Um, the star field is now 3D, so everything's kind of on a different layer, you know, with the nebula and the stars and stuff. And of course, there's a big cool looking 3D planet. Um, each time you start a new base, you'll get a different one of these. This one's like kind of a watery planet with a with an atmosphere. Other times you'll get an Earth-like planet with land. Other times you'll get like a gas giant type thing that's all kinds of different cool colors. Uh, so that's a really cool uh, that's a really cool visual addition. Um, it is just visual for the moment, but uh, I think in future updates, you know, we want to make the surroundings, the, the region of space that you're building a base in, more relevant. Um, and obviously, way down the road, it would be really awesome if you could send a shuttle out and do like an away mission there or teleport down to it and like explore ruins. I don't know. It's one of those pie in the sky, far off things, uh, but it does, it, it is exciting. And for the moment, it's just a really cool visual to have. Um, but yeah, the, the, the marquee feature, I would say, for this update um, that, the, that the title refers to, uh, props to anyone who gets that very old internet meme reference I get this at this point, the terrible secrets of space. Uh, what are these terrible secrets of space? They're the new science and technology uh, advances that you can make uh, in a research lab. Uh, you can now build, you can now zone rooms as research labs. Um, you can uh, assign people to scientists' duty where they will go and do work in these research labs. They'll work on these consoles. Presumably it involves putting these old floppy disks into these cool, chunky-looking retro tech computers. Uh, and they will be researching um, new science advances. So uh, on the left here we've got, um, this is another thing, we've, we've uh, redone our UI somewhat so that we could cram some more functionality in there. Um, but this pane that only shows up in research, uh, this tab that only shows up in research zones, shows uh, the list of uh, different research projects available to you. And these are all things that you can uh, research and build right now. They fall into two general categories. Some of them um, are, new, uh, are new things that you can build in your base, like uh, one of the things that I've already researched in this save game is, uh, yeah, and here we go, we can, I just told them to research uh, body armor and it says scientists have completed research on it. Um, what that means is, uh, is uh, that our security citizens, uh, people assigned to security duty, who are walking around here, um, they now have cooler looking armor that both looks cooler and it also has higher damage reduction. So next time they get into a fight with, a, with an alien monster or some raiders or something, they'll be a little better protected. Um, and that's one category of research advance that you can do here. Uh, just a better equipment for your people. Um, those tend to take effect immediately, um, and so everybody just gets them. Other things have to be built, like these uh, these level two 
aka modified oxygen recyclers. These things are twice as, uh, they have roughly twice the output of a normal oxygen recycler. Um, and so yeah, they're big and cool and they make it a lot easier to stay on top of your uh, oxygen situation in the base. Um, so yeah, there's some things that you can just build, new, new things for, for you to build in your base and other things that just make everybody in your base operate in a more, uh, in a more effective way. Um, yeah, why don't I go, uh, yeah, one of the, for example, yeah, uh, we added this thing, this wide beam vaporization ray. It's basically a cooler tool for demolishing structures. So um, people were saying like, yeah, when you have this derelict out in space and you've already kind of scavenged what you want from it and you just want to tear it down, now uh, you're, you can mark it for demolition and your builders will go out and they'll just, um, they'll be able to tear it down a lot more quickly. They, 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 they demolish multiple squares in one, in one go. Um, so yeah, things like that that are just making you know everybody more effective, and uh, yeah, so yeah, we're gonna set research going on that, and yeah, our scientists will go there, um, and they'll do the, they'll do that research stuff. Uh, if your scientists are too low skill, like if you assign some people who are really really bad at research, then you might eventually get some uh, you'll get some some uh, some some fires in the lab here, you know, because. Because you know, yeah, uh, bumbling scientists might might cause some fires, but the really good ones will be able to make really rapid progress on this stuff. Um, and yeah, I've got some pretty good people here, and I've already made some good progress on it. So that's cool. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the other ways that you can get technology. Not everything that's uh, in this menu here is what. Uh, let's deny this research, uh, this immigration request. Um, yeah, one of the you won't be able to, to build to, to research everything in your lab to start with, um, which is where this uh, discovery of new technology on derelicts uh, comes in. This was a derelict that showed up a while ago uh, near my base here, and I can click on this little uh, this data cube thing here. It's like a cool floppy disk. That's kind of the theme that Jeremy was going with here. Um, and this this data cube uh, holds holds uh, data on uh, a new technology that isn't available currently in our research lab. Uh, for Marauder Armor, which is another armor upgrade past what I just finished researching for security things. So I can mark, uh, I can mark this, um, this, this data cube for, for reclamation, and that means that a scientist is going to suit up and come out to this derelict, and uh, then they're going to collect that data cube and carry it back to a research lab, and then it'll pop up as a topic that we can research in our lab here. So that's pretty cool. Um, gives you a sense of like that there's things out there to explore and discover. Um, and you know, gives you gives you another reason to want to explore derelicts, and you know, have good security crew go out and make sure that it's safe before your scientists come in, because uh, your scientists, for the moment, won't you know, they're not able to fight for themselves. Uh, so that's a cool new thing. Um, <clears throat> and there's probably several things that I'll just sort of comment on in passing. Um, another thing that uh, that I did a little bit of work on um, that you can you might have read about a week or two ago from a post on on spacebasedf9.com um, is uh, is yeah, I added some features to uh, citizen personalities. Some of the first steps towards giving them, giving citizens actual personalities that cause them to behave differently and things like that. We can see, uh, yeah, we've actually got one of our programmers here, Ki Chi, uh, selected. This is like a cool custom portrait uh, that he's got. Um, and then yeah, a whole bunch of other people. You can see I'm cycling through here, and um, you know, you see all these different personality traits. Um, slovenly, which you know means that they're the opposite of a neat freak. Uh, optimistic, bad-tempered, lazy, gourmand, they appreciate fine foods, and everybody's a little bit different. Um, for the moment, a lot of what that affects is actually what shows up in their space-based log. So we, we can click on the Psych Profile tab here. This is the thing that I just added uh, to, to track some of this stuff. Um, and we can see that this person's very gregarious, lazy, optimistic, somewhat quiet, anxious, joker. And um, yeah, the, the, the tagging system that I added to the space face, to the space face log system means that they're now going to write, that they're going to choose lines that are appropriate to that personality. So now uh, when, you, when you click on different people and read what their space face log, it's starting to suggest you know, this actual personality that they have. Um, in future updates, one thing that I'm pretty excited about is we're gonna make those, these personality traits matter more and more. Like right now, lazy, only just means that they that they that they kind of have a lazy attitude about what they what they say, but it might mean but it might actually affect their work habits in the future. And a lot of these are kind of good and bad, you know. Like a lazy person um, doesn't need as much doesn't need to do as much work to feel satisfied and content as a citizen, but you might also you know want them to to, to be more diligent. Um, a gregarious person is going to go around and talk to more people, but if they're also kind of like if they have this kind of problematic personality, like they get into fights a lot or something, that might mean that they make a lot of enemies, things like that. Um, so not a lot of that is in right now, but in future updates, I think we're just gonna be doing this ongoing work on making the people sim matter more and more. Um, 
so yeah, that's another big thing. Um, there's probably other stuff that I'm missing. And yeah, like we, one of the things that um, that uh, that Matt Franklin, our lead programmer, spent uh, some time on this 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 uh, sprint period was uh, was just an overhauling our UI so that we could do things like have this tabs on top type interface. This is a lot of the same functionality that you've already got, but now we're we're it's kind of in a more space efficient way that lets us expand stuff in the future. Um, like yeah, if we want to add more tabs that expose more functionality, and I think we're going there. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's, as we expand the things that the player can do, uh, we're going to be expanding what shows up in the UI as well. Um, so yeah, one thing that I wanted to do here, I, I put up a post on the forums uh, late last week um, asking for questions for people on the forums um, about the game's development, where it's going, and things like that. And some people wrote in some questions, and so yeah, I kind of want to do a reader mail type segment here where, we, where I can answer some of those uh, for people. Um, first up, uh, ZZombie13 asks, are all of these research options in place for the current build or are they placeholders for later? Um, the answer is, uh, sorry. Uh, the answer is yes, for the moment, everything that you see in the research menu does actually do something. You can research it and it will have an effect in game, either as something you can build or something that people get. Um, we definitely want to add more of those in the future. We've now got a system where we can add new things. So in a future sprint, in, a pretty, in an upcoming uh, uh, alpha update, we're probably going to add this idea of base defenses, like automated turrets that you can use to defend your base from, from raiders and stuff. Those would have different tech levels probably, you know, so you'd be able to research cooler turrets and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, for the moment, everything that you can see, you can, you can do. Uh, Pi Sasson uh, asks, how did the project get from an AF 2012 prototype to something in the production pipeline? Um, I, I feel like we've already talked about that a little bit. Um, the whole story is, yeah, we finished the uh, Amnesia Fortnite prototype, and then um, Ron Carmel, a group of investors from Indie Fund and other indie investors, uh, basically came to us at Double Fine and said, hey, we would like to fund this prototype, uh, Space Base DF9, and uh, the, the upcoming game, Hack and Slash, um, as, full, as full development games. Um, and that's exact, and you know, uh, we, we signed that deal and um, released uh, Alpha 1 for Space Base late last year. Um, and uh, it recouped its, its investment, uh, that initial investment in it, within, within two weeks, which we're really happy about. So that means that, you know, we've paid them back for that initial investment. Um, and now, you know, we're, we're making money off the game. And if we make enough, then we can keep developing it. Um, and that's really cool. So yeah, it was really kind of this sweetheart deal that sort of came out of nowhere. You know, like at Double Fine, we've been used to dealing with either going with crowdfunding like we did for Broken Age and Massive Chalice, or uh, talking to uh, investors or publishers. You know, um, Psychonauts and Brutal Legend were made uh, using fairly traditional publishing deals, you know, where a big company that publishes games uh, signs a contract with us and we have to make a game for them and make sure that we deliver it on time and if we're lucky we see a little money for it afterwards. Um, so this was a really cool deal and uh, you know we're very fortunate uh, on the team to have, to have had that kind of opportunity to make this game um, because it's the kind of game that you know not every um, not every publisher entity or something would have taken a chance on but now uh, it's able to you know we're able to have this this uh, this fan base on Steam Early Access so so yeah. Um, their second question, PySassin's second question is, can we get an overlay that displays crew happiness in a scale similar to oxygen levels? It would be a nice way to spot upset, it would be an easy way to spot upset individuals. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, yeah, we've got this, uh, this oxygen overlay that, you know, shows like what oxygen levels are in your base, like that airlock doesn't have any oxygen in it right now. Um, we thought about an oxygen, uh, like different vis modes, and there's definitely, that's definitely something that we want to add in the future, but we realized, um, that, um, that there was probably a better way to feedback something like citizen morale. Um, and we did it, we actually got some, uh, we got some help from some of the animators on Broken Age uh, just in the past few weeks. Uh, Ray Crook and uh, Chris Lamb um, did some animations for us. And so now we've got, we've got a few new things that uh, add to some of the citizen expressivity here. Um, yeah, there was that one guy that, uh, where is he here? Everybody in this base is pretty happy, yeah. This guy is actually kind of doing a happy walk. Like he's got his he's got his arms out and he's just walking along and just seems all chipper. There's uh, there's some other citizens here who are walking with kind of this Charlie Brown walk where their shoulders are hunched over. Yeah, um, so that that's the way that we actually chose to feedback morale, uh, and it reads pretty well from a distance. You know, if if you see a bunch of your citizens like walking in that downtrodden I'm sad kind of way, then you'll be able to read that pretty clearly. So 
each of these different kind of uh, things that are happening in the sim, there's there are different ways to there are different ways to most effectively feed that back visually and you know with audio and things like that. So we're always on the lookout for ways to expose more and more of that in an intuitive way. Um, I think in this case, like a viz mode, wasn't as good an option as uh, as animation. So. So yeah, um, and yeah, there's a lot of other little character animation improvements that uh, those guys managed to make. So be on the lookout for as you're playing. Um, Ella Fred asks, um, has releasing space-based DF9 via Steam early access changed the usual development routine? Is it something you guys would consider again for future games? Um, yeah, it is definitely a different sort of process. Um, you know, we're getting constant feedback from players and we're releasing something every month, um, which is pretty different from when you work on a game for a year or even two years or something like that and then polish it up as best you can and release it to the world and hope everybody loves it. Here we get to make these kind of constant improvements and add big new features and stuff. And then we put it up on, you know, we, we post it, uh, we, we, put, we put the update up on Steam and then we get feedback about what people are liking about it and we get feedback on bugs and stuff. And then we, we go back and, and improve it. You know, we, uh, we fix bugs and we figure out what features are going to, are going to really improve the game. Add, add to that sense of possibility the most. So it is a really different process, um, and it's been really awesome so far because, uh, you know, it's like we're, you know, we're 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 um, we're living by, <laughs> you know, by the approval of our of our players of our fans here, um, and that's that's kind of a cool, honest sort of way to do. You know, and it's it's in keeping with the general push for greater transparency and stuff that we've done at Double Fine. You know, ever since we started uh, doing Kickstarter, you know, the, the, kick, the crowdfunded projects that we're doing and all that. So it's a weird, brave new world, but yeah. Um, I think early access is definitely something that we would consider again. It all depends on the game, you know. Um, so yeah, like some, some games like lend themselves really well to this kind of constantly updated, continually improving model. And so I think we'd definitely consider it for a future project. Uh, another question Aleph Red had was, if I recall, the permanent space-based dev team was reportedly just two of you. It's actually, it's, it's, lately it's been three of us full-time. Um, myself, uh, lead artist Jeremy Mitchell, and lead programmer Matt Franklin. Um, so it's just the three of us right now. Um, leading up to Alpha 1, we had a lot more people, like uh, Key and, uh, well, if I name everybody, you can check the, the credits for the game um, and see all of the awesome, talented people uh, involved in creating this game. Um, but yeah, and so we've trimmed it down because, you know, now we're part of this live team and, uh, you know, so like one programmer, one artist, and one uh, designer, project lead, part-time programmer guy, me, um, like, you know, that, that's been enough to keep us going for the time being. And then we get guest stars, you know, people who help us out with audio and animation and things like that. So that's worked out pretty well so far. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, more people would be better in the future, but, uh, but, but, but we'll see. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the last two questions from Aleph Red. Uh, speaking of bases in space and catastrophe, have you seen Gravity? Uh, also, have you seen Solaris, the more recent one? Would you consider some flavor of cosmic existential clone crisis event for Space Space DF9? Um, can't promise anything for uh, cosmic existential clone crises, but we definitely have ideas. Um, and yeah, we've bo I've, I've seen both Gravity and uh, both the, the, the older uh, Tarkov, Andrei Tarkovsky's uh, Solaris uh, from the 70s and the more recent uh, Soderbergh uh, Solaris with uh, George Clooney, was it? Um, yeah, those are all awesome films. We actually took a field trip, uh, Sp Team Space Base took a field trip to see Gravity in the theaters right after it came out. Um, and that was quite a, that, yeah, it was, it was pretty, it's, it's definitely pretty, uh, a pretty stunning experience in IMAX 3D sort of thing. Like, I was unconvinced that, you know, 3D movies were, were, you know, that it was really going to be worth it, but it, it definitely adds something. Uh, and yeah, Gravity was a was a pretty cool, uh, tense piece of filmmaking. Um, and yeah, Solaris is like this classic. Um, yeah, the, the the original book from which the, the movies are adapted by Stanislaw Lem uh, is definitely one of my all time favorite uh, sci fi books. Um, definitely like gets into that sort of existential philosophical sci fi. Um, yeah, so sorry. Thank you for giving me uh, an excuse to nerd out about that stuff, uh, Aleph Red. And then the last question is from uh, Clara Scuro. From what I've seen uh, of the game this, uh, this far, I love it. Thank you. Uh, and especially the social systems governing the interaction between station inhabitants, were there any large revelations regarding the difficulty of implementing such systems you've discovered? Um, I have to say, not really. Like, we're not doing anything particularly, like, experimental or ambitious, you know? Like, I don't think we're really implementing, you know, these you know, cutting edge AI research sort of things. Um, it's more just, you know, just thinking about what 
what's cool to simulate and then what we can feed back, you know, and that, that was part of my work on Space Faces. It was like, I want to make these kinds of things relevant to the sim, um, you know, and how do I do that and how, we, how do we distinguish the citizens from one another behaviorally as well as just, you know, just all the little flavor elements. Um, I think we're still in the early stages of, of making that stuff happen, but, um, but yeah, it's on its way. And then as far as just the actual AI stuff, you know, like how, does, how citizens make decisions, um, we're definitely taking a page from other games that have, that have done this, most, most notably The Sims, uh, the utility-based decision-making process that, uh, that The Sims uses. We looked at how they were doing some of that and kind of tailored that general approach for our own needs. Um, and yeah, Dwarf Fortress, I think, does a similar kind of thing, probably, probably simpler and more arcane and weird. But, uh, but yeah, when you click on uh, like Psych Profile here, it'll say uh, Unmet Needs. And that's, that kind of gives a window. This is something that I want to expose more about this in the future. I think I posted something on the blog uh, a while ago about uh, like the debug tools that we have that unfortunately I can't bring up in this. Uh, this is a release build. Otherwise, I'd, I'd bring up the debug tools and show you all that stuff. But yeah, citizens have different need levels for all these things, and that's what they're acting on when they... Uh, yeah, this base is full of content people. Like This is kind of a perfect, an unrealistically perfect, perfect running base. But yeah, this guy, um, like the, the, this guy right here, um, his unmet need is duty, and so he's going to want to. Yeah, he's working security right now, but um, but yeah, he would like to do more of that. So everybody has these different needs. Like you know, people have different needs for socialization and food and rest. All these people are sleeping because uh, their energy need got to a low enough level that they're like, well, you know, I need to rest more than I need to do anything else. So I'm going to act to maximize that utility in the nomenclature of it. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of our general AI approach. Um, I think at some point, yeah, like Matt, Matt Franklin can probably talk more about that because he's the architect of that whole system for this. Um, but yeah, it's just something that we're just going to be constantly making improvements to in the future. Um, yeah, Matt's, as I speak, uh, it'll be in, in an alpha 4B probably uh, whenever, whenever that happens. He's working on some pathing fixes, you know, so when people do decide to do something, they can get there and they'll do the right thing, you know, and all that. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think I'm just about out of material here, but um, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Space Base Alpha 4. Uh, we're about to plunge into two weeks of Amnesia Fortnite, where we're going to be making these cool new prototypes that are being led by some other people at Double Fine, uh, some of which I haven't worked with in a while. So that's really exciting. Um, you can watch the whole thing on humblebundle.com slash Double Fine. We'll be live streaming stuff. And then at the end of that two weeks, uh, we'll be back to work on Space Base, and we'll be moving away, moving along on Alpha 5. Uh, don't want to promise anything for like what, what that's going to be yet. I think we still kind of got to figure out some of it. But it should be something cool. And thank you so much for your support thus far and, uh, and for watching this video. All right. See you in two weeks.